Welcome back everyone, I'm Professor Rhett Smith for ProtonGuru.com and today we're continuing our study of carbonyls with lesson 6.7. I want to take a second and go back to this excerpt from page 126 of the Organic Chemistry 2 primer that's found on ProtonGuru.com and review what we've already looked at for carbonyl reactions. We learned about these type A reactions where you can take a ketone or aldehyde and do a nucleophilic addition followed by protonation. And we said this happens to some of the more reactive nucleophiles, the carbon or hydrogen centered nucleophiles. Then we talked about a couple reactions in our very last lesson where we can take water or alcohols and instead of a double bond oxygen, you have now two single bonds to nucleophiles with the production of water. We also noted that this type D reaction where water is a product is reversible. If I add water, I will be pushing the reagent back to form the ketone or aldehyde starting material. We're going to continue with our discussion of these type D reactions using primary amines. That means an amine that has one R group on it or secondary amines which have two R groups on the nitrogen. And one of the things I want to point out is the similarity between this reaction we're about to talk about in more detail. Hopefully you've already read about it and the reaction we talked about in our last video lesson. So when we take the excess of the alcohol and we react it with a ketone in this case, we're able to take the double bond O away as water and we need two hydrogens to do that, to protonate this oxygen, to take it off. Those come from two equivalents of the alcohol. Now if we have the example we're going to talk about in this lesson. We have an amine. The nitrogen of that amine can supply both H's that are needed to make water from that carbonyl oxygen. That means the nitrogen will have lost two bonds in supplying the two H's to that oxygen. All right, this doesn't happen magically in one step. We'll look at the mechanism in a second. But the nitrogen then can make two bonds to the carbon that lost the carbonyl oxygen. And this functional group is called an imine, as we will see in the next page. Now, the mechanism by which the amine reacts with the carbonyl really mimics what we've seen with alcohols or water previously. You have an attraction of the lone pair and the nitrogen for that carbonyl carbon. Now, in the presence of an acid catalyst, that process can be assisted by protonating the oxygen ahead of time, as we show in the primer. And we can have this step take place. Now, as we sometimes show, when we have water or an alcohol attacking as a nucleophile, you can have release of this hydrogen at the same time. So you may see it drawn out where whatever your amine is, is perhaps acting as a base and removing the proton at the same time to give you this neutral species as an intermediate. Now, all of these steps are reversible. So there are protons that can be coming on and off and you see I showed you an example where the nucleophile attacked before this O is protonated. I showed you an example where it can attack without the attendant deprotonation of the nitrogen. All kinds of things can be happening when you have these reversible steps. And if we protonate this OH in one of these reversible protonation steps, we can make this good leaving group. And now the imine double bond between the nitrogen and carbon can be formed with release of the water. You'll see that water is then a product of this reaction. And I have these two R groups, and now I have a double bond to nitrogen, but the nitrogen is not yet neutral. So again, another reversible step. We can have the deprotonation, perhaps assisted by one of the other amines in the solution. So after deprotonation of the nitrogen, we get the compound with the carbon-nitrogen double bond and this is called an imine. You may see this referred to as a shift base in some books as well. So the net reaction is that these two H's are removed from the nitrogen overall. The O is removed from the carbonyl carbon overall. So the net reaction features the double bond between the carbon and the nitrogen. And very importantly, you have water. So one very important point is that if you have an imine and you have water, this will go back the other way. It's like I mentioned that all these steps are reversible. 
if I had an excess of the water and I had a little bit of catalytic acid to help with all these protonation, deprotonation type steps I mentioned, we will actually go all the way back to the starting ketone and the amine and depending on the pH of the solution it might be the ammonium salt instead of the amine. But this is a reversible reaction. So usually when you do this reaction, you actually distill this water away as it forms so that you can cleanly isolate your imine. Now that reaction to form the imine required the nitrogen to lose two H's to make the NC double bond. We don't generally lose R groups off of oxygens or nitrogens in these types of reactions. So how are we going to involve a secondary amine in reaction with a carbonyl? Well, just like the primary amine, you do have attraction of the nitrogen for the carbon. And again, if we have an acid catalyst as required for this reaction, we might have the oxygen protonated ahead of time so that we would be able to go straight to a species that looks like this. And in this case, I'm drawing the carbon adjacent to the carbonyl carbon. This is a carbon called the alpha carbon. Because I'm going to involve it a little later in showing you the mechanism for this reaction. So here's my secondary amine, and you've got an ammonium. And again, these steps are reversible and involve shuffling around of protons. So I'll take a proton off, and you may see this shown as being assisted by another equivalent of the amine in solution. A lot of people just write B for some type of base. Maybe they draw a lone pair or a minus sign on it. There are a lot of ways to represent this, but just be aware that you're trying to demonstrate that you have to move protons around somehow so that you can progress with the reaction mechanism. So at this point we have two H's on the alpha carbon, the R prime. And the next step is going to be, again, to try to make the N carbon double bond. Now, there aren't any good leaving groups on that carbon at that point. So how will we make the NC double bond? Well, this is why the acid catalyst and shuffling around these protons is important. So we're going to go ahead and protonate that OH group with some of the acid catalyst present in the solution. That allows us to form the NC double bond. And if we draw out the other groups, this is the carbon that was the alpha carbon to the carbonyl. I'm going to leave the H's on there because I'll need them for the, one of the future steps I'll show you. But now we have this double bond from the nitrogen to the carbon. Now when we made the imine, if I just go back to that for a second, we took a proton off of the nitrogen so that you had a nice neutral nitrogen doubly bound to the carbon. We don't have the possibility to do that here. We have a positively charged nitrogen with two R groups attached. We can't just take an R group away. But a base, perhaps another amine in solution, can take a proton from the alpha position and push electrons up to the nitrogen. What that accomplishes is a step that looks a lot like an E2 reaction. Right? It's not really an E2 reaction, but it does make a double bond here when a base takes a proton away and it pushes not a leaving group off, but it pushes this pi bond up to the nitrogen. So the result of that is that I have a single bond to the nitrogen, two R groups, the R prime. This carbon that I'm putting a bold highlight on was the alpha carbon. Here's the other R group, and here's the H that was not removed from the alpha carbon by the base. Now this has a carbon here, which has both an alkene and an amine going to it. This is a species called an enamine, and the net reaction is indicated here, going to box D. This is the enamine formation that occurs when a secondary amine reacts with a ketone or aldehyde. A couple other reactions I'd like to point out here at this point are ways to reduce ketones. And I'm showing them here because one of these steps mechanistically starts out with a nitrogen-containing reagent. This reagent H4N2 is called hydrazine. And I'm not going to go into the details of the mechanism here in the lecture because they are provided for you in the primer on the site as well. But part of the mechanism is the hydrazine forming a CN double bond where this used to be. And then eventually what happens is this entire carbonyl 
unit is removed and two hydrogens replace the two bonds that the carbon had to the oxygen. This is known as the Wolf-Kishner reduction. Your product will be the benzene ring and the R group right here and where the carbonyl oxygen used to be are just two hydrogens. So you see that's a reduction because we've taken away bonds to an oxygen and added new bonds to hydrogens. Now this reaction does not involve mechanistically anything having to do with a carbon-nitrogen double bond formation like the Wolf-Kishner reaction does or the imine or enamine reactions do in the course of their mechanisms. But this reaction does the same thing the Wolf-Kishner reaction does. It will take the oxygen away and replace it with two H's. In this case your reagents are this zinc-mercury amalgam and you have to have hydrochloric acid. This is called the Clemenson reduction and here I'll just abbreviate the benzene ring as phenyl and I have the R group and I use these examples beside aromatic groups to show you that we could make some of these aromatics using reactions we learned in part four of the book and then do another reaction to get these benzylic hydrogens but these reactions work on ketones that are not next to benzene as well. Remember that if you take hydrogen and palladium on this reagent you'll reduce the ketone the same way. Now if I take a ketone like this, if I use H2 and palladium I will get no reaction. Right, The ketone will remain. But if I was to do the Clemenson or the Wolf-Kishner reaction, either one of these two, I would get reduction to the alkane where I've put two hydrogens on this position.